today I am going to swap out this old clunky server with this Azul Byte 3, which is over here on my desk. It should be an absolute pain and something is bound to go wrong, so it should make for an interesting video. The first thing I need to do is get this Azul Byte 3 prepped and ready to run because right after I pull the old server out, I want to immediately drop this little PC in to avoid as much downtime as possible. So the first thing I need to do is actually install this 120 gigabyte solid state drive. Uh, not a very hard task, it just goes onto the back plate like this. This is the uh, uh, plate on the bottom of the PC and you can actually, if I flip this over, you can actually see inside the PC we have our uh, cables for uh, SATA data and SATA power right there. Um, so the solid state drive sits on the back like that, just going to put a couple screws into it. You can see the screw holes, four screw holes right there. Uh, we also have a one terabyte Western Digital Blue drive, which is going to act as our backup. I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about this later on. So after I get the SSD installed, I need to get Apache up and running on this computer uh, to actually host the website. There's a couple other configuration things I need to do, uh, and then we can actually go ahead and pull the old server out and drop this little thing in. So things are actually going a lot smoother than I expected, which is a nice change for once. It only took me about an hour to get the Byte 3 up and running as the web server, and as you can see, we can now access the website from the Byte 3. It is being hosted from this little handheld, pe not exactly handheld, but I'll just say mini PC. Uh, I still haven't configured the uh, backups yet. That's something I'm gonna do towards the end of this video, but now comes the Fun part. So what I have to do now is go in here, this very cramped uh, closet, and it's a big closet. It's just cramped because I have a bunch of junk in it. Uh, I have to move all this stuff off the shelf, pull the server, uh, and put the Azul Byte 3 in. And that doesn't sound like a very daunting task, but I know, knowing me, <laughs> it's probably an absolute mess behind here as far as cable management is concerned. So I'm probably going to have to do a lot of cable management. Uh, there's probably just a ton of cables back there. You can't see it now, uh, but once we get all this stuff off the shelf, uh, we will unleash the nightmare. So let me go ahead and pull this stuff off uh, and see what we have to work with. And that's actually not too bad. I have a little bit of cleanup to do, but uh, not as much cable management as I originally thought. So things are actually going very well um, for this video. So goodbye server, old server, powering that down. Um, I'm going to keep the Ethernet switch and uh, this box right here, which has our backup drive in it. Funny story, this drive is actually dead. Uh, the backup drive for this server is dead, so I really uh, have been meaning to replace that for the past, I would say, five months. We've just been running without a backup drive for the past five months. Yeah, I live dangerously, um, so really need to swap this drive out with that one terabyte drive that we have uh, back on the desk. And for those of you who haven't seen some of my older videos, I'll give you guys a quick look at this old HP Compact machine that I was using as a server. Um, so in this machine, we have two 250 gigabyte uh, Seagate drives in RAID. When I put these things into service, they were already old. I think they had around 25,000 hours on them. Um, yeah, so I, I wasn't really working with any sort of budget when I built this machine. It was really whatever I had laying around in the back, and I just happened to have two 250 gigabyte uh, Seagate Barracuda drives. We also have four gigabytes of DDR2 RAM. There's our RAM, and a Core 2 Duo. So nothing really too special about this machine. Some of you are probably wondering what this thing is right here. So I was hoping that at some point, I would have enough money to afford a, a couple solid state drives and swap out the drives in this machine with those solid state drives and put them into this uh, icy dock uh, four bay uh, drive enclosure. Yes, this is a four bay drive enclosure that fits into the uh, CD slash DVD drive slot. So that's what this is, and that's from icy dock. I did a review on this, uh, I think, a year ago, and I put it in this machine but never really got to use this. The reason I'm swapping the server out doesn't really have to do so much with performance as it does with power consumption. I mean, between these two machines, there's not too much of a performance difference. Uh, in this little uh, Azul Byte 3, I think I might have already said this, we have a quad-core Atom, four gigabytes of uh, DDR3 RAM, and of course that 120 gigabyte solid state drive. If you're more interested in uh, the tech specs of this machine, I have a review on this that goes into uh, technical specifications, capabilities, benchmarks, etc., etc. Now that video will be down in the description if you want to check it out. Whoops, kick the side panel I put there. But let's take a look at power consumption. So we have the Azul Byte 3 sitting at idle. And at idle, it is consuming, that's right, a mere 
3.3 watts. Now let's take a look at that HP server at idle. And the HP server is using around 45 watts. So the Azul Byte 3 is using significantly less power than the uh, HP server. Though the HP server really isn't that power hungry either. Uh, 45 versus 3.3 is a massive difference, especially uh, especially in the long term, uh, since this is a server, this is running, or well, this is the server now, uh, it will be running 24-7, and I do plan on eventually having the server run purely off the uh, off-grid solar system. Once again, that's another video uh, that I made in the past. Actually, it's sitting right under here. Um, so that is our off-grid system. We have a wire running outside. Um, and there are a couple solar panels out there. I'll, I'll try to throw some B-roll up so you guys can actually see what I'm talking about. But I have a 100 watt uh, solar system. I'm going to add on to it. And uh, after I add on to it, I would like to power uh, the whole web server set off purely off solar power. It's almost there now. I could use a couple extra batteries and maybe an extra panel or two. Uh, and that's probably something I'm going to do next summer. It's a project that's been ongoing for a very long time. Uh, and I've just never gone, gone around to actually switching the server um, over to solar power. So this is one step in the right direction. I'm almost there. The server is up and running. Cable management is still eh. Uh, but the last thing I need to do is swap out the backup drive. So this 400 gigabyte Western Digital Caviar drive is toast. I'm gonna take this out and replace it with this one terabyte Western Digital Blue drive. I think we're good. The server is up and running. I swapped out that uh, Western Digital Caviar drive for that Western Digital 1TB uh, blue drive. And we are currently performing a backup just to test the uh, backup drive out. And I haven't run into any issues there. The server is using a lot less power now than that HP Compact machine was. It's also ready to be uh, swapped over to the photovoltaic system when I get around to doing that. Some people are going to ask what this is right here, this big box. This is just a, a UPS I bought from a garage sale, I think a year and a half ago for like three bucks. Replaced the battery and it turned out it was 100% functional. The battery was just dead. So I've been using that and it's uh, actually been doing its job very well. We had a quick little blackout today for a couple seconds and this kicked in. Uh, and save the uh, server from going completely down. So this has definitely come in handy. That's going to be about it for this video, guys. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with this uh, HP Compact machine. If you guys have any ideas, feel free to uh, throw them out in the comment section. Don't forget to drop a like on this video. If you didn't like this video, please tell me why. And of course, please do not forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Once again, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next installment of A Computers and Technology.